All right, time for another Facebook video about the Australian election. Today, I want to talk a little bit, a little bit about the Senate. But first, uh, I still need to apologise for any sound issues. Um, it's primarily because I have a head cold and uh, I have, am having trouble breathing through my nose. So if I do sound a little bit like Snuffleupagus from Sesame Street, I do apologise, but we'll just bear, if you can bear with me, we'll struggle through and uh, we'll get into the topic today. So I want to talk about the Senate. So firstly, I'll explain what the Senate is and how it's made up. And then I want to talk about why I think the Senate's more important than the House of Representatives. So the Australian Senate is also called the Upper House. It's made up of 76 senators, which is represented by 12 senators from each of the states and then two from Australian, um, from the Territory. So the Northern Territory and the ACT have two each. Um, they're elected, uh, unlike the Upper House, through a single transferable vote and it's on a quota system. So essentially, uh, it's a very complex system, but essentially it boils down to a party will be able to have a senator if they can get about 14.3% of the vote uh, in, in a particular state. So uh, unlike when you uh, elect someone in the House of Representatives where it's basically we're trying to get to a majority of votes for somebody who then gets elected, um, you can have a senator uh, elected in a state without it being an absolute majority, so 14.3%. So that's the makeup. <coughs> Sorry about that. That's the makeup uh, of the Senate and how it looks. We're electing about 40 senators at this election. Um, we don't elect every senator every election. Um, there's a whole very long reason for that, but it's important just to realise that it's about 40 senators will be elected this time. Now, I want to talk about why I think the Senate's more important than the House of Representatives. So at the end of the day, when it comes to the House of Representatives, um, which is also the lower house. So you're going to end up being a Labor government or you're going to end up with a coalition government being made up of the Liberal and the National Party. Um, and there's, um, there's really the only two choices. <clears throat> you can vote, obviously, in certain seats for independents and minor parties um, and you'll get the odd you know, independent or minor party that will win a seat, but they're never going to win enough seats to have any real influence at the lower level of the, um, of the parliament. But... At the upper level, which is the Senate, it's a lot easier for the minor parties uh, to be able to get senators who then have a lot of influence um, in the Senate. Now, the reason for that is that when a bill is introduced to the lower house or the um, House of Representatives, um, it will be voted on, you know, and passed or, or it won't be passed. But let's say it's passed, you know, it'll, it'll really come down to whoever's got the majority of seats in the lower house, which is usually the government of the day then goes to the Senate where it's debated and the Senate gets to vote on it to see if it becomes a law or if it doesn't become a law. So at the end of the day, the Senate has the more important uh, job and it has the most power because at the end of the day, you know, laws will either be passed there or they won't. So even if there is a Labor government that wins the next election, which looks like it will be the most likely outcome, um, and that's a very scary prospect for a lot of Australians because a lot of the policies of the Labor government under Bill Shorten are truly scary um, and will, you know, potentially lead to massive job losses and economic ruin uh, in, in, for Australia. The saving grace, if you like, will be in the Senate. So if there's enough uh, independents and minor parties elected to the right of, pol of, the, of, of the political spectrum uh, that make it into the Senate, um, Labor can introduce any crazy bill they like uh, and it can pass the House of Representatives, but if it doesn't get through the Senate, it won't become a law. So what does that look like? Let's say Bill Shorten decides that he wants to have a 75% tax rate for everybody in the country, regardless of how much money they make. Nobody thinks that's a good idea, but let's say that for whatever reason he decided to do that and he had the majority of power in the House of Representatives, so it passes the, the House of Representatives, it goes to the Senate where he doesn't necessarily have a majority because hopefully there's enough crossbenchers uh, up there that can argue if it doesn't pass the Senate, it doesn't become a law. So when it comes to voting in the next election, my advice and what I'm going to do uh, in the House of Representatives, I'm most likely going to vote Liberal first um, 
or maybe nationals, depending on, on the candidate. I'm going to put Labor and Greens down the bottom. Um, but, the, you know, that doesn't really matter because I don't think the um, Liberal Party is going to win. But when it comes to the Senate, <clears throat> I'm going to vote, you know, people like Australian Conservatives. I'm going to vote One Nation, even if you don't like that. Um, I'm going to vote that side of politics because I feel like if we get enough of those people into the Senate, we can stop the government of the day, which will probably be the Labor Party, as I said, going and doing whatever dumb thing they can dream of. Um, so I'm in favour of minor parties for the Senate and major parties for the House of Representatives. Um, although I'm only in favour of how, uh, major parties for the House of Representatives because, as I said before, there's no other real choice. You're going to have Labor, you're going to have the Coalition. They're the only two real choices. Um, so that's the Senate in a nutshell. Um, now, the other thing to consider with the Senate and the voting, um, now, it, it's a little more complicated. So there's above the line and below the line uh, voting. And to make sure that your vote counts, you can either do one through six above the line in a preference deal, much in the way that you um, would vote at the lower house. You can actually just vote one for a particular party. So if you like the Liberal Party, and you, you could just vote one up above the line for the Senate, um, and that would count uh, as a vote towards the Liberal Party. Um, you could also vote above the line one through whatever, but they'll only stop at the first six. If you're really excited, you can actually go and below the line and vote one through to several hundred. There's going to be hundreds of people that are going to be on the ballot paper for the Senate. Um, I wouldn't recommend it because the more likely result is you're going to miss number, miss a number somewhere, and then it would become a donkey vote, uh, uh, sorry, an informal vote. <coughs> so voting above the line would be my suggestion. Uh, as I've said before, I'd love to hear your comments. Um, if you have anything that you want me to talk about, whether it be a policy of one of the parties or some other thing to do with the election, um, either send me a message or jump on the comment section uh, and you know, ask away. And if you wouldn't mind sharing the video, I, I think it's really important that people understand what's happening in this election cycle. Um, I think one of the biggest problems we have is that a lot of people vote and they don't even know what they're voting for, who's even running for parliament. Um, and I am going to do a video uh, probably tomorrow about compulsory voting and why I think it's a bad idea. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Talk to you tomorrow.